in any social media type app, there's going to be some sort of a voting or likes system. So Facebook has likes, Reddit has upvotes and downvotes, Instagram has likes, Twitter has likes as well. And so we're going to implement a simple like system as well. And we're going to quickly go over the requirements for it. So the first thing is a user should be able to like a post. A user should only be able to like a post once. We shouldn't be able to like a post 10 times and then artificially cause the number of likes for that post to go up. And then finally, anytime we retrieve a post from our database uh, or from our API, we should also fetch the total number of likes for that post. Now let's take a look at the requirements for our voting model or our like model. And so naturally, just like we have a table for users and a table for posts, it makes sense to store the votes in another table, just like we always do. And if you think about the requirements or what we should do for the columns, well, we need to have a column that's going to store the ID of the post that we're ultimately gonna like. And then we're also going to need a column that references the ID of the user who liked the post. So those are the two absolute minimum number of columns that we need to get our voting system in place. Keep in mind, if you wanted to do a, you know, an upvote, downvote type thing like Reddit does, then you might want to have a third column for the direction of your vote. But we're going to keep this nice and simple, and it's just going to be a very simple like system. So it's just one direction. But the most important thing of the vote table is that since a user should only be able to like a post once, this means that we need to ensure that every entry, every post ID and voter ID is a unique combination. So what do I mean by that? Well, take a look at this. We have a post with an ID of 12, and this post was liked by a user ID of four. So this is what an entry would look like. And that's perfectly fine. And if we go, and we here, we've got a post ID of 28, and it looks like a user with an ID of nine liked this post. And if I go all the way down to here, you'll see that post ID of 12, which you can see that there was already a row with the post ID of 12, is liked by a different user, nine. So it's perfectly okay to see a repeat in this column. And under the user ID section, it's perfectly okay to see a repeat uh, in this column as well, because we can see that a user of ID nine voted and liked a post with an ID of 28, as well as a post with an ID of 12. And then obviously uh, one post can be liked by different users. So a post with an ID of 12 was liked by a user with an ID of four and a post with the, the same post was also liked by a user with an ID of nine. Now what we can't have is a user liking a post more than once. So you could see here, uh, user two liked a post with an ID of 55. We can't have him do that again, right? It's a duplicate. This isn't allowed or, or this shouldn't be allowed in our system because we don't want users to be able to uh, like, uh, like a post more than once. And so there's a couple of different ways of setting up this requirement, but we're gonna take a look at the simplest solution. And we're gonna learn about something called composite keys. So we've already covered what a primary key is. It's a, it's a column in your table that's going to ensure that every single entry is unique. And we always used a column um, called ID, which had a auto incrementing integer. However, what we can also do is make use of something called composite keys. And a composite key is nothing more than a primary key that spans multiple columns. So we've only worked with one column primary keys, but we can actually have it cover more than one column. We can have two columns or three columns. And since a primary key must be unique, this will ultimately ensure that no user can like a post twice if we make sure that both of these columns are part of the primary key, right? And so when you have a composite primary key, it does not care if there's duplicates in one row. It does not care if, sorry, in one column, and it does not care if there's duplicates in the other column. All it cares about is, are both of the columns the same in two different rows? So once again, you know, for a post of ID 12, we have a user of four who likes it, as well as a user of nine that likes it. And so with the composite primary key, it sees that as two different entries because it needs both of them to be the same to be considered a duplicate. So we can uniquely identify this row by saying, hey, I want the row with the post ID of 12 and a post ID of nine. There's gonna be no other rows with that combination. And the same thing goes in the other direction. The user nine can like post 28 and he can also like post 12. And so once again, we can uniquely identify either one of these rows because we can say, hey, post 28 with the user ID, that's a unique combination and a post ID of 12 with a user ID of nine, once again, a unique combination. However, we can't have a user with the ID of two like 55. And then once again, the user ID of two 
like 55 because the combination of these two is now a duplicate because one is 55 and two and the other one's 55 and two. And so that's all a composite key is. It's just a primary key that spans two columns and ensures that across both columns, we have unique combinations for things.